What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. It is Saturday. You know, we're not really putting out videos too often on Saturday. We usually do our live streams, but it's August, baby. It's pump and dump season. Okay. We're doing some nasty, heinous shit out here in August to get them sub numbers up. So thank you for joining me today. Y'all yelled at me enough. You know, we did our strategy videos, the best fantasy football strategy. If you got picks one through four in your draft, then the next day we did a video. If you have picks five through eight in the draft. So if you have anywhere from picks one through eight, make sure you go watch the videos linked below for the number one fantasy football football draft strategy for 2021 today as i directed y'all to you yelled at me in the comments enough telling me that you wanted picks 9 through 12 you wanted the strategy for it so today what we're going to do is similar to what we did in those other strategy videos we're going to jump onto sleeper we're going to do a couple mock drafts one quarterback league super flex league 12 teamers and rip off what i think to be the best strategy if you are picking in those spots Okay. You know what's fucking insane to me? You know what's insane? The the amount of toxicity on social media platforms is out of control. Like some of y'all are just the most negative motherfuckers for no reason. And it hurts me to see it. It really does because I just know you have you have a shitty life. Okay. Don't take that shit out. Like TikTok. TikTok's a whole nother animal, right? Like you gotta be on TikTok and be posting shit. I get worried when my videos start popping off. Like we put up a video. Uh, one of the YouTube shorts, one of the suggestions I had for your league, I was like, here's a fantasy football league setting that I love that I think you guys should adopt. Tiered PPR, really fun, right? Half PPR for running backs, full PPR for wide receivers, 1.5 for tight ends. It's a fun setting. You guys should try it out if you want to have fun. Like the entire comment section is like, you're a fucking loser. L, L, L. This is the worst take. I, I could go on to TikTok. Or even make a YouTube short and be like, yo, I hope uh, if you're having a shitty day, it improves and you have a great day. I like I wish the best things upon your life for the next 24 hours. And the entire comment section would just be like, L, 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 I hate you. You fucking suck. I'm like, bro, this is I, the amount of toxicity in the 14 year old demographic generation is out of control. But I love the fucking energy. I've got a lot of energy. I'm going to the fucking comedy cellar tonight. The goat of the comedy shows out here in New York City. So I'm excited. Life is good. August is rumbling and bumbling. We are thriving right now. So if you want to continue feeding off this energy, all you fucking negative 14 year olds out there, subscribe to the channel, baby. Live with me. Live and die with me. All the bad fucking strategies I give you. Let's go down together, all right? You know what to do. Let's tuck our shirts. That was the most efficient tuck I've ever had in my whole life. Let's stop yelling. And let's eat. I have to make an announcement for all Patreon members, all Big Dog Patreon members, anyone who has purchased the BDGE draft guide this is for anyone planning on purchasing plan uh, someone who already purchased someone who's been a patreon member for two years someone who plans on signing up for patreon after today's video this is an announcement for you guys i want you to be very very clearly listening to what i'm about to say if you don't plan on doing any of that shit and you're just here for the video we have timestamps below for the two different strategies that we're going to go over in this video so y'all can skip ahead but please if you are a purchaser of any of the products or services that we provide to you please listen up for the next minute or so a lot of you guys been asking me what the fuck is going on with the draft guide are the where, where are the rankings i can't get access to it etc cetera, etc cetera. guys the draft guide is not officially live yet i got off a call with the web development team the agency that's working on our draft guide right now the website for it and they said there's no reason we should not be officially live on monday morning so that is august 16th monday morning or maybe monday afternoon i don't know maybe noon or two o'clock or some shit like that it is a new website okay it's going to be the same url it's bdge.store but the next time you go after i tell you it's live and the next time you go to it it's going to be a new interface is going to look completely different and things are going to be scattered around the website differently. What you need to listen to is this. If you have signed up because it's all transferred to a new website, you guys are not going to have accounts on that website. Okay. I'm going to try to manually add you guys to the website. If you've already purchased it, I'm going to be able to export your name or export your, the email list of people who have already purchased it, upload it to the new site, but I don't have your guys's password. So I'm going to put in a password for all of you guys that have purchased it. So if you go to the new website after I announce it's officially live, I will be sending an email out to that entire email list, letting you know that I have uploaded your email into the new site and you will be given the, the new password. I'm going to have the same password for everyone that has the email. Like you're all going to have your, obviously your emails as your logins, but I'm going to give, you know, it's going to be something simple like BDGE one, two, three or some shit like that. You're going to be able to log in with that. And then you could change your password afterwards. That's if everything works out correctly. If you are a Patreon member, 
this new site, the the hopes and the dreams are to completely cancel out Patreon altogether from the BDGE server, okay? So if you're a Patreon member, you can continue paying through Patreon, but the new website is going to be set up where you can buy the draft guide, where you can become a Patreon member, but it's going to be called something different on the new website. You're not actually going to go through Patreon. It's just a membership website and also merch. So anything you want to buy BDGE related will be on this one website. So what you can do, what you can do, and would make life a lot, a lot simpler for you. So you have access directly to the website rather than having to link Patreon to the new website and do the rankings that way is you can cancel your Patreon subscription and then sign up on the new website. So it's like if Patreon is $10 a month, right? If Patreon is $10 a month, you can cancel that. And then when you go sign up on the new, uh, on the new website, you'll become a member on the new website. That will be the same price. It'll be the same exact thing. And I actually might give you guys a discount because you've been loyal Patreon members already. If I could do that, switching over to the new website, having it on WordPress will give me uh, access to having a lot of customizability and uh, a lot of, you know, coupon discounts and shit like that, that I could do with you guys, which is why I'm really excited to launch it for you guys. Okay. So this is all to say, I know that everything on the site right now is a complete fucking mess. But as of, I believe, Monday, uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully Monday, everything will be live and I will be working tirelessly to manually transfer over all of the memberships, all of the draft guy purchasers, all of the Patreon members. OK, so if you want to make life easy for me, once I announce it's live, head to the new website, use the email that you originally used to purchase it and use whatever password I send you guys over via email. If that doesn't work, just click the forgot password button. And if I have uploaded your email, then it'll, you know, it'll recognize it in the system and it'll allow you to change a password to whatever the fuck you want. If you're a Patreon member, you can move from Patreon over to the membership website and it'll give you access to everything within the membership site. If you have any issues at all, if you're a dumb bitch like myself, like I would have trouble with these directions, probably info at bigdogsfantasy.com and we will troubleshoot it for you as soon as possible humanly possible. Okay. If you had purchased the draft guide and you already had your draft and you weren't able to use it because it's not live yet. And I know a lot of you guys have had drafts as early in the uh, summer. Unfortunately, I will obviously refund you fully. Okay. So with that being said, please, I'm a human being. Please work with me. I'm trying really fucking hard to get this live. I'm going to have a lot of work to do this weekend to make sure everything is out there. I mean, the draft guide is full of all the best content we have. It's the official must draft player list, the official fade list, all of our favorite sleepers, values, undervalued players, the season long Bible, which is basically this video in like an 8,000 word format broken down position by position. We've got new dynasty content coming out. So we'll have all new player dashboards for every rookie coming into the league for your dynasty league. We will have Mike's BDG dynasty Bible. We obviously have the dynasty rankings, the rookie rankings, the season long redraft rankings and super flex PPR, half PPR standard one quarterback leagues. All of that shit is in the draft guide on BDGE.store. If you're listening to this or watching this on Saturday, August 14th, then I'm in New Jersey right now watching animals spend 20 hours in the woods. Sunday, August 15th, or possibly Monday, August 16th. The new site is probably not live yet, but if you're following me on the social medias, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, I will be making announcements throughout there, so make, make sure you're following. I actually will probably go live on YouTube at one point to just announce that the draft guide is actually live. Thank you for listening. I know this was a long announcement. And obviously, if you listen this long and you're fucking mad at me, that's on you. Because I told you there was fucking timestamps in the description. So you could have fucking... Let's move to Schlepa. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay. So let me get my socials out of the way. Yeah, again, follow me at Nick Ercolano on Instagram, on Twitter, all that good shit. So we are going to start off with the one quarterback leagues. We are going to draft on Sleeper. This is sleeper.app. There is also a mobile app on the app store for you guys that ask afterwards. We're going to do, again, one quarterback. So we're doing half PPR. We're going to do no more super flex here. One quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, two flexes. And we're going to look at the first nine or 10 rounds because, again, once you get to like rounds 11, whatever, strategy kind of goes out the window and you're just getting your guys that late in the draft. So we are going to grab the 111. That's fair, right? We'll do the 111. Maybe in the super flex, we'll do like the 112 or the 110 or whatever the fuck y'all want to do. Oh, I didn't realize they made it. That's pretty sexy. That's a pretty sexy. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. C-Mac, Derek Henry, Saquon, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Nick Chubb, Jonathan Taylor. Wow. Even Sleeper knows. Even Sleeper knows how this shit goes down. Okay. 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 So here is what we're looking at right now. You guys know I am a big time proponent a big, 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 big time proponent of running backs early, 
running backs often, grabbing two running backs with your first two picks, first three picks if you want to chance it, that's a lot easier when you have an earlier pick, right? If you're picking anywhere from like 101 to the 106, there's a much higher chance, much higher likelihood that a top running back, even someone like J.K. Dobbins, falls to you in the third round and you're really comfortable at RB2. So it's risky to let a second running back pass you by on this turn because by the time we get to 311, there probably won't be a lot of good running backs left, okay? Normally, what I would say is grab two running backs here. We're obviously not grabbing a quarterback. Uh, I am one that's a big proponent of, I'm not taking Travis. Unless you're in a tight end premium league, like there's no way I'm using a first round pick on Travis Kelsey. So we're going to forego that. Devontae Adams is sitting here. Now, Devontae Adams, like obviously I want a guy like Jones or Ezekiel Elliott or Nick Chubb to fall to me here and I'd probably take them in a heartbeat. But since that tier of running backs is kind of off for me. I do love Austin Eckler, but with Devontae Adams, Devontae Adams is basically the Christian McCaffrey of wide receivers. So if I'm sitting at the 111, if Devontae Adams is off the board, I'm not even thinking about a wide receiver, okay? Because he's in his own tier. If Adams is sitting here, I will think about it. And this is going to be dependent on your league settings. Because we're doing three wide receivers, it makes him a little bit more valuable because the positional scarcity at wide receivers is a little bit higher. If it's a full PPR, obviously he is going to separate himself from a lot of the other wide receivers at the top because he gets so many targets and receptions. Depending on your league, if you're just a two wide receiver starting league, half PPR standard. Adams is not a guy I'm going to be targeting. Okay. Uh, Wide receivers are just immensely devalued in that spot because he's in his own tier. And when I look at the running backs on the board, am I comfortable with Eckler, Mixon, Gibson as my RB1? That's what you have to ask yourself, right? This is not a uh, necessarily like a player analysis video. This is more of a strategy thing. I think the question you got to ask yourself is because you know the next pick, right? The 2-2 is going to come back to you around the turn and you are going to get your, you're going to get either Eckler, Mixon, or Gibson, okay? So if you're comfortable with one of those guys as your RB1, and I know a lot of you guys are probably like, I'm not comfortable with Gibson there. If you like Najee Harris, Najee Harris is a good fucking ball player too. Uh, You have to ask yourself if you're comfortable with those guys as your RB1. If you're not, you're going to smash Eckler here and then you're going to get your RB2 of Mixon or Gibson on the turn, assuming, you know, Adams and or Kelsey goes off the board on the turn to team 12. So you ask yourself, what would you rather do for just, you know, argument's sake? I'm going to go with Devontae Adams here because I think he's in his own tier. And then we can go back into a second draft where we do start out with two running backs and we can kind of compare the teams afterwards. So I'll go with Adams. There you go. Kelsey and Diggs go off the board. That's fantastic. We got really lucky and we can go with Eckler here, who I like more than all the other running backs. Had he not gone off the board, I'd be fine with Joe Mixon there. I'd obviously feel a little bit shittier with Mixon than I would Eckler, but that's a pretty fucking rock solid, titties hard, juiced up, chubbed up first two rounds of a motherfucking 2021 fantasy football draft. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about here. We have all of these running backs go off the board. If you don't grab two running backs within the first two rounds when you're at the end of the draft, you put yourself in a fucking spin cycle. And by that, I mean there is no one even borderline close to being a a third-round value. I like Darrell Henderson, and I would think about taking him here just from a team-building strategy standpoint. But again, like I talked about in that in the last strategy video, picking five through eight, it's almost like the slippery slope narrative where once you start with wide receivers, every time you're back on the clock, you start to think to yourself like, oh my God, look at these good players still on the board. Mike Evans, CeeDee Lamb, like all these players, their names look shiny. They don't really help you win leagues. And before you know it, you're stacking up three, four, five wide receivers off the rip and you kind of ha- hate your team. We did get kind of lucky here because I would obviously by far and away take Darren Waller over the wide receivers left on the board because he is actually a huge advantage to have at the position we got lucky him falling down to the 311 Uh, otherwise I probably would take Darrell Henderson here to be honest with you because all things equal I think he's a high-end RB2 I think all these wide receivers are high-end wide receiver twos and if I'm just doing a tiebreaker straight up I will take a running back over a wide receiver 10 out of 10 times but since we have Darren Waller we're gonna grab him and uh, I'm fine taking whoever falls to me on the back turn okay so we got Waller I'm gonna settle with Darrell Henderson here. I like him a lot more than I like the wide receivers because if you think about it, like Julio Godwin all the way down to these guys down here, Deontay Johnson, Brandon Ayuk, those guys, I'm I'm really fine having those guys as my wide receiver too. I don't think it's a huge, huge jump up to Chris Godwin, Robert Woods, and those dudes. But if I don't take Darrell Henderson here, I'm looking at my RB2 as being like fucking, ooh, they're going to go off early. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be like Melvin Gordon or some shit. So I think you have to take Darrell Henderson here. And there goes a bunch of the wide receivers. We see a big run. Uh, quarterbacks are still kind of sitting pretty. And this is usually where, you know, we talked about it in my first strategy video uh, from the 501 to the five, or the 101 to the 104. That's about where you need to be grabbing Kyler Murray. Murray or the quarterback that she wants. 
Now we're back up on the clock. And again, you guys know I am not a fan of any of these running backs in particular, especially not at a fifth round price tag. We can look at the quarterbacks. I think this is like an okay spot to be grabbing your quarterback, but I think the first five guys are like the elite tier. Mahomes, Murray, Josh Allen, Prescott, Lamar Jackson, uh, Russell Wilson, obviously, had, and Rodgers probably both have an elite floor. I'm a little bit hesitant on what their ceiling is compared to these guys who, who give you so much rushing upside. So I'm probably going to sit on quarterback at this point. Once you miss out on these guys, if Kyler were to fall here, or even like Lamar Jackson or whatever were to fall here, I would smash the button on him. But we we love Tyler Lockett. We like Brandon Ayuk a lot. So hopefully we can actually round out our team with those two pass catchers uh, because Team 12 already took three wide receivers. So you have to start to think that they look at a running back or a quarterback at this point. So again, these middle rounds, like this is why I don't like going wide receiver up top. Like we could have, we could have gone Eckler and Mixon short up our running back spot. And then instead of Darrell Henderson, we could have grabbed Amari Cooper as our wide receiver one. And then you ask yourself, would you rather have Eckler, Henderson and Devontae Adams or Eckler, Mixon and Amari Cooper? Like I, I, I would usually lean the the latter because I like the top end running backs. Uh, but we're, we're sitting pretty here with Lockett falling to us there. This motherfucker takes two more wide receivers, but he didn't take who we wanted in Brandon Ayuk, and you love to see it. So I like how our team's turning out, obviously, right now. I would like to be a little bit stronger at the RB2 hole, though I, I do like Darrell Henderson. I think of all the guys getting drafted as running back twos, he has like a really, really nice floor-ceiling combination, in my opinion. So we're getting biked down to us, and I hope Jerry Judy falls to me. That'd be sexy. Yeah, he did. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's check out the running back situation here. Man, It's it is ugly. It is ugly. It is ugly. Uh, Y'all know I love Robert Tunyon, but I think the 7-Eleven may be a little bit too early. So what we could do, what you want to do if you want to get spicy is go for the Rodgers Tunyon. Oh, no, we already have Darren Waller. I apologize. Never mind. Uh, So we're going to sit on that. We're not going to take Rodgers here, even though you could and feel really good about your QB1 situation. But to be honest with you, actually, I don't know if another quarterback is going to fall to us that we're comfortable with. I think the last guy I'm like really comfortable with here as like a high end quarterback one this tier is Tannehill. So we can forego Rodgers at 7-11. Maybe he falls back to us at the 8-2. But if not, we can definitely get a Brady, a Hertz, or a Tannehill at the 8-2. I'd probably rather get another wide receiver just to feel, just to fucking feel something because it hurts so bad right now. Now, just to feel really secure about our, our, about our last flex spot, or actually it's our first flex spot because we have a tight end already. So uh, we're going to grab Judy. I think Judy has a really, really good chance of just breaking out and going absolutely fucking nuts this year. Okay, so Rodgers went off the board. This is probably where we're going to grab our quarterback, and I am fine taking Tom Brady here. I think his floor is just so high. That offense is going to be a well-fucking-oiled machine. Oil it up, lube it up. Uh, let's look at the roster. Sorry, I realized I was hiding that the whole time. So, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good team so so far. Tom Brady, Austin Eckler, Darrell Henderson, Devontae Adams, Tyler Lockett, Brandon Ayuk, Darren Waller, Jerry Judy. Really, really, really. I mean, you look at the running backs, and you're not like, oh, I fucking love that team. Uh, but then you start looking at the pass catchers. Devontae Adams and Darren Waller are just such a nice anchor for that team. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, once we get down to round 9 and 10 again, I'm, I'm, I, I told you guys I'm not going to get too into the weeds here. Y'all know I love Antonio Brown. I think, he, I think he has a legitimate shot at finishing as a top 15 wide receiver, and I just took Tom Brady. So this is a, a no brainer for me. I'm going to stack those two. And I'm going to go back to the running back position and just make sure I get a guy that that I know is guaranteed to get touches. And that is Gus Edwards. And that'll wrap up the strategy for this for this squad. We're going to run this back again and do it starting off two wide res- or two running backs and see how the strategy turns out differently. I also think that we're probably going to end up not getting Darren Waller falling to us at the 311. So it's probably going to be a running back, running back, wide receiver start. But let's run a bite and see what happens here. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this team. This team actually turned out really, really, really well. A lot stronger than I imagined it to. Again, though, I think you're really rolling the dice if you don't go with two running backs off the rip because you're hoping a guy like Darren Waller fo- falls to. You're hoping the Chris Carson. You're hoping a J.K. Dobbins or whoever falls to you all the way down here, and it's risky. So the, the later you are, the 311, the 312 is riskier. 39, 310, you know, percentages go up a little bit, right? 310, we could have got Carson there. But, you know, it, it's still risky. So let's, uh, let's go bike. Let's start this up again. We are going to go with draft settings. Again, we're going to go with the one quarterback league. We'll go to super flex right after this. 9 through 12. We're going to update that mother sucker. Rasta settings. Get that super flex up, patty. And let's run it back with the 111 again and see how this team turns out without uh, going with the wide receiver early. So we keep seeing Tyree Kill go off the board. Obviously, this is not like as realistic. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is cool because you swap it around now and Jones falls to us instead of Adams. Jonathan Taylor 
normally would drop a little bit, but we are hearing really, really good news out of Indy Camp that both Wentz and Quentin Nelson might and very well may be ready for week one. So that is very exciting. So I know Aaron Jones is dealing with a minor hamstring, but again, he's got like a month until the season starts. So I'm not worried about it. So we're going to go, you know, no brainer. Look at Aaron Jones. Been a top five fantasy running back basically year in and year out. And this is beautiful. This is fucking beautiful because instead of grabbing Eckler as our RB1, now Eckler's our RB2. And now I believe you have two league winning upside running backs here. Jones and Eckler, you are set at the running back position. And if value falls to you at the running back, you know, and you get to take a fucking Chris Carson as a flex play, that's a that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So we'll see what happens here. This time, Dar- uh, Darren Waller goes off the board a little bit earlier. Okay, we missed out on Chris Carson. There's no one else that we really love here. I don't even hate, I don't even hate taking Darrell Henderson as your, as a flex here. But I do like Allen Robinson a lot. I'm not going to say I, I think he's going to be that much better statistically because Justin Fields is a rookie. He's going to take some pass attempts, turn him into runs. But I, it does give you a higher weekly ceiling, in my opinion. So, you know what? We'll, we'll take Allen Robinson here. We'll be happy with him as our wide receiver one and uh, see if – there you go. Darrell Henderson fell back to us. So I think that's pretty sexy right there. And we'll take Darrell Henderson as our first flex spot. And then we'll see what wide receivers and uh, maybe a quarterback will fall to us and probably fucking not. But I already feel a lot more comfortable with my team right now. I feel so much more comfortable knowing I have backup running backs on top of backup running backs and just a solid, solid team overall. This time we didn't get motherfucking Brandon Ayuk, but we did. But we did. Ooh, ooh, Hawkinson sitting there. Hawkinson sitting there. I really like Hawkinson. One of, I think, four or five tight ends last year to go over 100 targets. That is not an easy feat for tight ends. And now you have Marvin Jones. This is actually crazy, right? You think about the Lions makeup. Hawkinson had over 100 targets last year. And you, you think about Marvin Jones leaving, that's like 115 targets. You know Kenny Galladay's out of there. He didn't play much last year, but that would have been a big target share. But you also have like Danny Amendola, who was 70 targets. You have fucking Jamal Agnew, who was like another 35, 40 targets. You have so many players that left. It equaled out to, I believe, 265 vacated targets. So you've got to feel really good about TJ Hawkinson's floor this year. So if you miss out on the top tight ends and Hawkinson falls to you here, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, we do have Lockett here. I would really like to go with a Lockett T Higgins stack, but I feel like Sleeper is going to fuck around and have this guy go with fucking four or five wide receivers again off the rip like he did in the last draft. I don't like the running backs, so we'll probably pass on running backs. I don't love the tier of quarterbacks either, so we'll probably sit on that. What would you guys do here? Would you guys try to go with the Lockett Higgins or would you take the TJ Hawkinson? Because what I would like to do is try to go Lockett Higgins or, you know, if I miss Higgins, we can go like Claypool or whatever. And then I can go and try to get the Tunyon Rogers stack on the turnaround. I think Tunyon's going to be a beast this year, but obviously, you know, every every late round tight end comes with risk. Hawkinson, I feel like, does not. So I'm going to go with Hawkinson here and then just take my wide receiver two of whoever of Lockett and Higgins falls to me. And we'll see where we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. Lockett got picked, unfortunately. We're going to go with T. Higgins. I like T. Higgy Higgy. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Make sure you go check out the other strategy videos if you did not already. That's about it. That's about it. We're back up on the clock, the 7-Eleven, and again... Uh, okay, so I'm not mad that we took Hawkinson because I got my choice of Debo, Jerry Judy, Devontae Smith as guys that we could take as our wide receivers. Aaron Rodgers still sitting on the board. I'm fine with Rodgers and or Brady, and I know that we could probably get Antonio Brown on the next turn. So we're going to take, let's see, Debo, Judy. I, I think I like Judy's upside a lot more. So we'll take Judy here. And since we're just so comfortable with our running backs, like maybe I w- actually would have thought about taking Trey Sermon there, but I like our first three backs. And then uh, and then we're going to take Aaron Rodgers. We're not going to think too hard about this one. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Something, something. Okay, okay. If you wanted to get real spicy and grab Tunyon just for the fuck of it, you could do that. Uh, I probably should have just taken Brady so I could stack him with Antonio Brown, but we'll grab Brown as one of our flex spots or our second flex spot. And yeah, I mean, listen, I just think this this team is way more well-rounded than the first team. I think the first team might have had a little bit more firepower, to be honest. But you know what wins leagues? Uh, league winning running backs. Those are what win league. And we have two possibilities here. Jones, Eckler. If you're a really big fan of Darrell Henderson, maybe you believe he can be a league winner. Uh, but Rodgers all the way down through Antonio Brown. I don't see a hole in this lineup. Like the worst players are like Higgins and Jerry Judy. And they're, you know, worst case scenario, they're probably like top 30 wide receivers. I don't see a real hole in this fucking lineup. So I love this. I absolutely love this lineup. I think it's fucking bulletproof through and through we have upside we have floor we have points we have every position 
covered and taken care of. And the most fragile position is tight end. So maybe we'll just stack Rodgers with Tunyon here and be done with it. So I love this team. Uh, let me guys know. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this team. I like both the drafts that we did. I think the first one is just a lot more risky. Hoping that uh, Darren Waller falls you. Hoping that you get a, a good running back in the fourth round at the fourth spot. You know what I mean? Just a, little, a little freaky, freaky, freaky. All right. So that will be the final team there for the first 10 rounds. And then you guys can just grab whoever the fuck you want. And then we're going to jump into a super flex draft. We'll do one of these just because I got shit to do. Animal snacks are on their way over for a live stream of Fade the Public. You guys probably missed that yesterday because no one fucking wants to watch us. Understandable. Fair. Whatever. Fuck you guys. All right. So now we're going to do picks 9 through 12. Super flex strategy to quarterback. Update. Roster settings. We have the super flex spot in there. Cool. Uh, let's run it from the... Let's run it from the, uh, what do you guys think? Not that I can fucking hear you or talk to you right now, whatever. Uh, we'll just go with the 10 to switch it up. Now, this is going to be very much like my last Superflex video where I told you it's running backs and quarterbacks early and often. We, we're not even thinking about wide receivers in a draft setting like this. And we have the first four go off the board. So one of the top quarterbacks, and that would be Dak Prescott, is sitting there on the board. And uh, I just don't think you pass up a top end quarterback in a super flex league like this. And it's going to depend on what you think. OK, so do you guys do you guys see Dak Prescott as a tier above? You know, you, you start to look at this from a tier base perspective, right? If I pass up on Dak, there's a good chance I get either Herbert Wilson or Rogers on the turn end around. Right. There's four picks and maybe three of them don't get picked there because there are a lot of other players. You know, Kelsey and Adams will probably go. And then you ask yourself, OK, Taylor, Chubb, Zeke, Aaron Jones are sitting there. And Eckler. How many of those guys are in a top tier for you? Uh, like, is Zeke a tier above all the other running backs by far for you guys? Is Dak a tier above the other guys by far for you guys? Like, how are you feeling about the individual player? And for me, I really, really like Zeke this year. He's probably in the same tier with Aaron Jones, but Aaron Jones has the hamstring injury already. So I think Zeke is probably a little bit more favorite for me. So Zeke right now is kind of in a tier by himself, whereas... I don't think Dak is in a tier by himself above Herbert, Wilson, and Rodgers, in my opinion. So I'm going to go with Zeke here and then see which quarterbacks or whoever falls back to me. So we have Dak again. And then we have our, we have our choice of Chubb, Jones, Eckler. All those running backs are going to be gone by the time we get back to our next pick. You have to ask yourself, is it worth trying to see if like a Tannehill falls to you as your quarterback one there? In my opinion, probably not. The smaller the league size fine. Like if you're in a 10 team league, if you're in an A team league, you can forego quarterbacks early because they're going to be available. Even shitty ones on the waiver wire. The bigger your league is, the less risk you have available for you. You can't be risk. You have to be risk averse. You have to take quarterbacks early. We're going to grab Dak here. Uh, you know, if you like Rogers more than Dak, whatever, fuck it. Doesn't really matter. I do think there's a good chance that a, that a decent running back falls back to me in the third round. I think there's a good chance that like a Dobbins, a uh, David Montgomery or Chris Carson, who I'm really comfortable with is my RB2 falls back to me. And then we have our high end quarterback one. So we'll see how this plays out. Big money, big money, big money. I feel like I'm playing fucking schlots right now. Playing schlots with schlutes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, no, all the running backs are ripping off. Let's go. All right, cool. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we could have, okay, we could have probably waited and still got Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers or some shit, but Joe Mixon falls all the way back here. We love that. We love J.K. Dobbins. So I'll go with Mixon, shore up my running back two slot, and then we're feeling good about the team. We're feeling good. I'm not even going to hesitate. Here's the thing, again, guys, in, in, in super flex leagues, you don't need two superior quarterbacks. One high-end one and then one low-end QB1, one high-end QB2 will get the job done for you perfectly, okay? In the same way that whoever you're comfortable with starting in a one-quarterback league, whatever the lowest-ranked quarterback it is you're comfortable with as your starter should be who you're comfortable with as your quarterback two in a super flex league. That is the way I look at these things. As our flex spot, Chris Carson is sitting there, who I absolutely love. Uh, oh, Allen Robinson and Keenan Allen are both sitting there. So it's going to be up to you uh, what you want to do here. I really like Chris Carson. Y'all know I love Keenan Allen as well. But again, just just based on pure team building strategy, uh, I'm going to take Chris Carson and feel really fucking good about my running backs because we're going to get value at wide receiver no matter where we are in drafts in a super flex league. So we'll see what falls to us here. And listen, at the beginning of the draft, you want to go running back, running back completely fine with that. I think you're gambling a little bit, but based on like being comfortable with the top 15 quarterbacks, you'll probably get a Rodgers or a Stafford or a Brady or a Tannehill fall to you in the third. So you can feel okay about that. Uh, no, nope. So we're good with running backs and we have our first flex. And then, you know, we're in the fifth round and we're getting guys like Godwin, DJ Moore, Adam Thielen, Cooper Cup or whatever fall to us here. So I'm feeling good. And I don't even think we need to take our first quarterback yet, though we might need to on the turn. Okay, so the way I'm looking at it is this. None of these guys are like a tier above for me, so I don't think we need to jump at it. I like Kirk Cousins a lot, actually. My highest rated wide receiver in this group is actually Cooper Cup. 
So I'm going to grab Cup as the 510 and see who falls to me here. There you go. Cup might have been gone because there goes six straight wide receivers. I will probably grab my second quarterback here. What you could do is this. There's two strategies here. When you get to your second quarterback, you can take your second guy like Kirk Cousins and be comfortable with it. Or you could probably wait another round, grab Fields and or Trey Lance, and then pair him up with a Derek Carr, even a Jared Goff, a Cam Newton, uh, any of those guys in a round or two later after that, you are using three quarterback picks instead of two, but you secure a lot of upside with one of these rookie quarterbacks in Fields or Trey Lance, but you're just not sure when you can actually start them in your lineup. So you might just be using, you know, four weeks of Derek Carr. So it's kind of up to you what you want to do there. I think both strategies are fine. Both both strategies are reliable. Uh, we're back on the clock. I'm going to I'm gonna actually opt to choose for the second strategy, take one of the rookie quarterbacks, and then grab a veteran quarterback after that because I really like some of the wide receivers available to us here. And since I think I'm probably going to land Trey Lance, I'm actually going to stack him with Ayuk rather than Woods or Lockett. Though I like I like Woods, I like Lockett, I like Deontay Johnson. I think any T. Higgins, any of those guys in the middle rounds are fine with me. Ooh, Lockett almost fell bike to us. Okay, uh, so again, Trey Lance is going to be sitting there. We could probably push it to the next turn, honestly. Do we have a tight end yet? No. I don't really, I don't think any of these wide receivers are really like a tier above. Though I do, I, you know, I've taken Jerry Judy in every draft. I'm not too worried about Devontae Smith, to be honest with you. The knee sprain should be more than fine by the time this, this season actually kicks off. But for right now, I guess we'll, we'll grab Jerry Judy and then we'll grab Trey Lance on the way back. Oh, there goes one. There goes one. Don't do it. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, girl. So we got Trey Lance. And then we're going to take a veteran quarterback later on in the draft to be our second actual starter. Good pick right there because Lance definitely would have went off the board in that run. See, it's so nice not having to worry about running backs because it feels like once you get down to like the fourth, fifth, sixth round, seventh, eighth, ninth, whatever, the positions that you're targeting, tight ends, quarterbacks, wide receivers, almost all the players just feel interchangeable. They really all feel interchangeable. Like none of them are really huge tiers above when all the running backs kind of like stink and you're just hoping that they hit their upside. Though I do love Damian Harris and I would love to take him here, but we cannot chance not getting a third quarterback that that's startable. So we'll, we'll grab, uh, we'll grab Der dude, honestly, like Taysom Hill is fine with me. We'll grab Derek Carr just for safety purposes. But please. And then Damian Harris fell again. Let's go. I know Ramondre, the God Stevenson broke off a big run. Listen, he's not going to make an impact this year. Now we have four running backs, one breakout candidate, three solid wide receiver twos, high end wide receiver twos, two solid, solid quarterbacks. And then Trey Lance is super high upside. And then, you know, we're all the way down here. So it's kind of like best position available. I love Jonas Smith. So we'll just fucking take him and be done with it there. So we have our starting uh, tight end. If you do wait this long, it's probably advised to take two, uh, two tight ends. You know, we might just go Jonu and Troutman here. And that's really going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, that's that's basically our whole starting lineup. So you guys get the point. Uh, super flex, running backs and quarterbacks early and often. Uh, stat, get get your guys up there to, to, to stuff your fucking roster and then worry about the quarterback twos, the wide receiver twos and threes, the tight ends later on in the drafts. You'll be happy you did. Uh, I hope this video help, was helpful for you guys. Uh, I hope that you will consider purchasing our draft guide. It's on bdge.store. Again, it's not completely live yet, but as of Monday, please, if you're planning on purchasing it now that you've watched the video, go back and watch the first 10 minutes of this video so you have instructions on what to expect and how to access the draft guide. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. I love you. I'm out. Enjoy the weekend.